All right, and I'll let Maya uh, dive in. Uh, yeah, so first of all, I would like to kind of give um, an over, uh, overall overview on the achievements. We are advancing in terms of uh, creating semantic based search. Uh, we do have a notebook that allows to search engrams um, within the papers. We now have the code uh, by Robbie. Uh, that allows to use engrams for a specific word of your interest, uh, which uh, and uh, by reverse engineering analysis, I've arrived to a conclusion that well-built uh, uh, semantic search allows to produce uh, plausible uh, and meaningful uh, um, paper extractions. Uh, so. Uh, as we have some subset of keywords, we are now ready to move further to a, a task that requires, based on this keywording, the extraction. What do we have as a resources? We have V6 uh, data set from Brandon that is labeled, vectorized, uh, it, lo it looks beautiful, and it's uh, <laughs> quite user friendly. Uh, we have a um, general LDA notebook that allows to perform the search. And we have keywords as an input uh, to start extracting a search that is related to heart diseases. And this has been uh, opened now as a task uh, on our Trello board. Uh, this task is a little bit complicated, so I would like to explain it in depth, taking into consideration that uh, my English <laughs> is not the best, but I'll try my best to make it as, as clear as possible. And um, I would like, like there are a lot of members now uh, currently working on uh, engrams extractions and uh, uh, semantic, uh, all kind of semantic tasks. That would be great if these members are online now, if they share their concerns or findings or blockers. Uh, so one Anyone? Thing, oh yeah. So one thing I'm realizing when I'm looking through the, the uh, some of the notebooks is that um, uh, what Carly or Cara did for the heart disease one, it's not necessarily finding grams versus documenting the frequency in grams currently in the data set. So it's not necessarily finding some. And so I'm I'm modifying or at least I'm adding Robbie's code and then I, I like I just extra code to allow us so that it finds engrams based off of the art, like what we think are uh, engrams versus like trying just, just to document them because it doesn't really add anything that we don't know already. It just, it just like, we just have it versus like it finds new ones. Um, so I'm just modifying that uh, and I'm trying to see, uh, because age was a very simple in a sense where you only had one keyword and from that we could filter through versus if we feel, try to filter through cardiac, you know, disease, C, the CBD, heart, like at different times, we just be very, like, we just be multiple times you're doing it. And so I'm trying to like edit the code to allow for um, uh, a little bit quicker processing with Robbie's code. This sounds amazing. And if there are someone who will be uh, capable of integrating things together afterwards, that would be lovely. Uh, some other concerns or findings so far? It, it seems there are no. Uh, so, um, uh, and and um, Andrew, uh, who worked on uh, simply uh, basic logic uh, of defining uh, keywords, uh, he uh, suggests us. Uh, he he mentioned he noticed that uh, most of the tasks that we were given as a high priority by uh, MD input, okay, most of them are interrelated. For example, indeed that H contains heart disease and lung disease and heart disease are uh, chronic diseases. There are some kind of interrelations. 
So Andrew, after we uh, proceed with an extraction, suggests uh, to do uh, matrices that will allow us to do cross, uh, cross-sectional analysis, uh, which is, I think, uh, a great idea. Quick question. Uh, and uh, yeah. how, how do you guys plan to kind of present that cross, cross-sectional uh, multi-risk analysis? I, I get the idea and I get what you're trying to do, but in terms of the output... I think that if Andrew shows his... He, he, he wants to base it on distances mm. okay. and kind of other statistical parameters that create kind of rankings, allow you to find highly correlated articles. And so is the uh, output like the uh, kind of the clusters of interrelated risk factors? Yes. Okay. So the end out. So if you want, uh, kind of showcasing like this group of you know age-related diseases, uh, age-related age risk heart, factors, and age plus it. lungs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, Lung that's cluster. that's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, Randall, uh, uh, have a feedback on that? How that would be useful for MDs and physicians? Randall, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Uh, have you been following what, what Maya was describing in terms of, yeah? yeah. Um, well, yeah, if it's, a, if it's a clear visualization, I think that that would be very helpful. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm wondering, is, does this data set have any uh, medication information? Yep. So uh, actually the other team already produced a quick way to navigate all the possible treatments that were mentioned within the CORD-19. You can click on like hydroxychloroquine and see all the papers that mention it, whether in abstract on body. I can send you a link. Okay. For the call. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is uh, for Elsa, we realize that if we talk about risk factors, it should be separated into two uh, different uh, type of uh, findings. What has been tested on animals and what actually happened to, to humans. We will separate like uh, clinical uh, studies and uh, trials with animals. This will be separated into two different uh, subsets of data within one topic. That's great. And uh, do you have a some feedback on, on that, like how important that separation is from MDs or? Yes, uh, yes, this is uh, um, uh, an MD re uh, input. So she told, uh, she told us uh, 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 the following. Uh, one second, I will, uh, I will quote because it will be the best, I believe. Uh, here is, here is uh, the claim that uh, a, the segmentation that I mentioned uh, depends on my hypo hypothesis. And if I'm trying to identify whether heart disease is associated with a higher fatality, then I have to uh, restrict a search by clinical studies. But if I, I want to, for example, identify whether heart disease in general is associated with worse outcomes following viral infection generally, or coronaviruses generally, then I want to, uh, a, I want to expand uh, to the animal studies. And uh, animal studies, uh, it's usually dogs, pigs, and sheep. And, uh, uh, and mice, rats, and hamsters, some of them are infectable, some are not infectable. So that also, that groups also will be defined uh, further, uh, divided further. Makes uh, sense. So this, so this is a kind of high level uh, segmentation ideas. But at the moment we are at uh, extraction, like defining keywords, semantical, bu building semantical base for research and uh, extraction. So uh, it turned out by analysis of uh, multiple papers that we were so far uh, uh, 
uh, managed to extract, uh, I've noticed uh, the following pattern, and I really need the, that pattern to be tested. And I will try to understand what, what I mean. It's, uh, it's related purely to extraction of papers. Now, we are talking about heart diseases, okay? It turned out that if paper uh, mensch touches the topic of heart disease, the following roots of the words will be there for sure. Coronal, cardia, cardio, heart, arterial fibrillation, hypernation, and ischemic, okay? Uh, almost all papers that speak about complications use the word severe. The papers that describes uh, fatality use different words. It can be fatality, death, lethal, uh, mortal, or morbid, the roots. So we need to, the task goes as following. We need to take an existing top modeling LDA book that we already have. We need to take a data set version uh, six that was created by Brandon and NLP team. And we need to extract papers that contain combinations of these words. For example, a uh, paper contains coronal and severe, coronal and fatality, etc. Okay? Does it make sense? Yep, makes sense. So the task, uh, the description of the task, extract papers discussing the risk of complications and fatalities due to virus for patients with heart diseases. Papers should include studies on animals. The search for keywords should be in method and result sections of the paper. However, and it's important to mention, the density of keywords, we need to look in all sections for the density because density in all sections will help us to understand the relevancy, okay? Makes sense. And, I mean, a hypothesis, and, but let's see. Uh, if we it's a hypothesis, yep. absolutely, yeah. As, as most so, of the stuff that happens here daily. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, almost everything I am, not almost everything, everything I'm saying here is not a claim, however an assumption, okay? Yep. And uh, can here, you define, uh, how can, I, you define, uh, can you define density? Density over keywords. That means that we will have some papers that, for example, have 12% of uh, uh, words. Yeah? yeah? Will be words that is related to coronal, cardio, cardio, heart, which means that most likely this is the topic they specifically focus on. So the frequency of the keyword in the document? Yeah, frequency. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can, I, can, I, can I ask a question about the uh, clustering yes, sure. project? Uh, is it possible to cluster uh, age and um, uh, particular comorbidities? Yes, that's the yeah, so, so there'll be a cluster of uh, under 65 with, uh, say, diabetes, under 65 with yes. heart disease. Yes, over, yes, that's over the purpose. And yes, so we can see the. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. That's the purpose because uh, age by itself is too general. Normally, there are at least one pre existing uh, chronic disease at a certain age, but most of the people will have a variety of them. So we need to, I will first think on structure on how to make it meaningful because it's not that self evident. Are you going to use particular bins for age or a continuous uh, variable for age? Uh, it's, it will be a little bit more complicated because data probably doesn't provide us what happens exactly after 60 and what happens exactly after 65. Mm -hmm. But if, if uh, we will be able to extract such information, then it will be possible. So I would just like to mention that uh, I looked at the morbidity mortality uh, report uh, from April from the CDC, and I noticed that um, they did a comparison of uh, hospitalization 
for patients uh, of uh, 64 years of age or younger, or actually between 19 years of age and 64 years of age, and then over uh, 64 years of age. And then they also compared admission to the hospital and admission to the ICU. And then they also compared um, comorbid condition. Uh, so there was a difference in um, there was a difference in the percentage of comorbid positive patients admitted to the ICU in the elderly group. So for example, Indeed. Yeah, so, so, so 91 percent of the patients in the elderly group who were admitted to the ICU had uh, at least one comorbid condition. Uh, whereas, Absolutely. Whereas only 30 percent of the uh, under 65 age group admitted to the ICU uh, had comor had had uh, I'm sorry 70 70 percent had comorbid conditions in the in the young group 91 percent had comorbid conditions in the elderly group the 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 conclusion that I took from the overall uh, set of data was that if you're elderly you have a greater chance of being hospitalized absolutely if you're, if you're um, if you have, if you're elderly and you have uh, comorbid conditions, you're more likely to be in the ICU. Uh, most likely. More likely um, to be uh, in the ICU if you're elderly yeah. and you have at least one comorbid condition. So that's that's what's motivating me to look for a clustering result that that's uh, what we will, that segregates so, by yeah, age and segregates by comorbid conditions we, we will try to do that absolutely and uh, i want just to go back to task and explain the outputs that we expect okay uh so the outputs that we expect it should be code and it should be uh extraction in the form of a csv file then does paper prove or deny correlation? Absolutely optional. If you think that it's hard to do, don't do that uh, and leave it aside. Paper ID is important. Link to a paper uh, DOI is very important. It's mandatory. Uh, sentences uh, containing keywords from results section, it's mandatory and it helps us to afterwards do all kind of quick sorting. Full text uh, result section or conclusion section. Method section full text. Authors mandatory. Number of times the paper was cited by others is preferable. But if it's complicated to do, don't do that. And number of times the whole text of paper contains heart related keywords like frequency, okay, or density or whatever you call it. And another important label that we need to get, if it's COVID-19 mentioning paper or not. These, these are kind of prerequisite, pre pre uh, you understand what I mean, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, if, uh, the, uh, if the extraction will be done in this form, it will allow us to make a lot of meaningful filtering and a lot of meaningful segmentations within the papers. Question, do anybody ready to take this task? It's quite, it requires some thinking and it requires some coding skills. Can you be more specific, NLP or uh, just like Python? It's NLP, it's, yeah, it's NLP and Python primarily. There are a lot of things ready like data set that, that has pickles and you can uh, talk to it and it's, uh, it's already has very nice corpse and everything, yeah. uh, uh, and everything is labeled. Here's what I propose. Uh, if the task already is described in Trello, uh, let's uh, let's basically list out all the needs uh, in Slack channel right now, so that people that are not on this call can possibly see that task. 
if we won't find anyone in our Slack channel, then we'll get someone from the communications PM HR to help us find the person. Sounds good? Yes, uh, that sounds amazing. And uh, I, I, something that I wanted to tell to you that probably our final structure in the Kaggle, final Kaggle notebook, again, every day everything changes, yes? But it looks like the, the structure will be a little bit different. Because we will need to explain very well on semantics and on methodology mm -hmm. and on the search. And it's a huge part of the success of the whole process. And else it's important to explain disadvantages uh, of this method. So the structure will shift a little bit. More importantly, it's, it's super important for, for me to catch up with you and document what you're already doing to expose this to other teams because Believe me, risk factors team is way ahead in terms of this, you know, knowledge base in terms of how to approach these specific questions. Other teams are more, you know, deep down into machine learning tasks and you guys are doing some tremendous foundational layer that will propagate to other teams. So I'll try to catch up with what you're doing with the engrams and this initial pre-processing and filtering and the heuristics you're using and I'll try to modify the structure of the notebook. Oh, amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, please, uh, members of this group, please consider uh, taking this task. Um, and if we produce yes, high sure. quality, uh, if you produce high quality results, that will be out of this world. It will be just out of this world. As we, we, we discussed earlier, Maya, hello everybody by the way. Hi, um, yeah. Uh, uh, about um, presenting in a really simple way, um, communicating the sort of model, the workflow of, of, of what it is that we're doing and what the outputs um, are and, and just how we get to those outputs. So this is something Maya and I discussed earlier. So I'm going to try to document that in, in, a, in, a, in a really simple way, the, the simplest way we can. Uh, maybe produce a, a flow chart, a, a short presentation that I can maybe give to you guys just to really describe what it is we're planning. So. Oh, that, that's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, Iason and Andrew, they really helped me today and yesterday just in an amazing way. Um, we're, we're, we, we really advanced uh, so much. Robbie did an amazing quote. Uh, Kevin is helping us to fine tune the code. Uh, 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 the member with this is a little bit complicated name. Uh, months, um, okay, <laughs> but this guy does an experimental design of his own which also sounds amazing and I'm curious to see results. Like I have to tell that the contribution of the team is beyond amazing. I'm, I'm really amazed. So, it seems uh, so from the outside too. Like, wow. <laughs> I learn every day so much from, from, from the and team. Especially having Randall here on the call is amazing because none of the other teams have such an active participant which is impressive. So thank you so much, Randall, for, for dedicating your time. Randall, Randall created the whole structure for everything we are looking for now, giving us the priorities. That's yep. his very important contribution. Yep, it's amazing. Uh, it, again, like all people from different backgrounds somehow figured out a way to work together and it's impressive and very inspirational. Thank you, guys. Uh, so uh, we will have, I, I believe we will have a call tomorrow and yeah, Arthur, um, I will uh, share the link to a task and please try to help us to, to find someone. Okay. Sounds good. All right, guys, I'll wrap it up. I'll stop recording and I'll upload the video shortly. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, so, so I, I'm really intrigued about this idea of uh, yeah. the medications um, the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors and the uh, uh, 
uh, angiotensin receptor blockers as being effective treatments or, or being risk factors for severe infection. Is there, do we have a data set that includes medication lists where we can uh, uh, interrogate whether uh, being on those medications offers protection or if it increases your risk for severe disease? Yeah, so I would say that, um, so there is this progress of the vaccines team that built this kind of visual database. I'll send you a link after this call to okay. explore. Maybe you can spend five minutes and I'll explain what, what is happening in there on the call. Overall, uh, no, there is no such, uh, you know, aggregate way to showcase the risks, though I feel that the treatments team, which is the the separate team, a part of those uh, four teams that we have, the main teams, is kind of trying to approach it from that dimension. And there is, there is a different progress there. We've kind of excluded that team from the main uh, you know, flow because it, it wasn't a part of the Kaggle challenge. But we want to make sure that we're actually doing beyond the Kaggle challenge and helping with what's really necessary. So that treatments team is kind of organic effort. I've created a private channel so that not everyone who jumps in uh, is flooded with a lot of teams and we're trying to progress with, with that. And I think we're going to have a daily call today for that team too. So maybe you can ask that question in the treatments team and see if, if Hillary or any other toxicologists um, have, have input because there is Hillary and her husband, which I believe are both uh, toxicologists and pharmacologists, so they may have better input. So that call is today? I think so. I think at three, but I'll, I'll have to double check. We're still uh, bad at, at organizing calls, so I'm trying to figure that out. Okay, thank you. Uh, Cassie? Thank you so much. Um, um, I, yeah? I've got a couple of queries. Um, so first thing is to let you know is I'm working mainly Team Geo and what uh, we are actually in the process of um, finalising a roadmap document um, to look at what we, are, we aim to produce um, and when we aim to produce it. Um, so we're looking at basically three phases. The phase one um, is basically the first April 16 Kaggle uh, competition deadline. The next is the June one. And then we have um, like an ongoing phase, which, and we're looking at ramping up um, our, the granularity of the data, um, the uh, number of factors as we go. What I would like to know from you guys is, um, what are your needs uh, for Team Geo? From what it sounds, I don't think there are any specific needs for right now, but they will start appearing down the line as we integrate more and more data in terms of like environmental factors and others. But right now, it sounds like we prioritized the uh, more demographics factors and the disease correlations based on the input of MDs. Um, Hope that answers your question. Okay, we've got um, we've got a demographics database. We've basically got a re basic world coverage, um, and then we have more granular coverage for selected areas. If you guys have any priority areas, that would be. And awesome. in terms of demographics, uh, can you quickly give us a summary of what kind of demographics data you have? Um, at the moment, we're extracting uh, things like age, sex, uh, ethnicity, uh, all that from, sort of stuff. From where? Um, some of it is coming, I believe. Uh, don't remember when, when the majority of it is, but the uh, USA specific is coming from the US census data. Um, on on the actual yeah. outcomes or like could, maybe it would be great to take this off to slack and actually list out the all the data sets that you guys we, have. we need to understand the columns because for right. example if it has like death 
uh, an ethnicity, just for sake of, uh, of example, that might make some statistical sense. Yeah. If it's number of cases and ethnicity, this won't help us at all, at all because number of cases is a very unrepresentative data all over the world. Yes, okay, I gotcha. Um, yeah, that's exactly the feedback we're looking for. Um, so if I, yeah, if I let you know what our um, target output is, and you could guys could weigh in on that, uh, that'd be awesome. I did also have one other question. Um, I don't know whether you've looked at um, or whether or how exactly how relevant it's going to be the actual stage of publishing of these papers. Um, so we're talking, you know, are they pre-press, currently in press, which is basically accepted and peer reviewed or published? Um, as, as from uh, my experience with the top extracted papers and we primarily try to deal with the top papers, they all are published. Okay. Great. And uh, as per uh, manual review, which I do all the time on the data sets, the, the magazines at least, they look they look good to me. It's not okay. the it's not the guardians. These are normal medicine journals. Yeah. Okay. It was more a case of um, end users knowing kind of what stage the publication is at. I understand what you are saying. I, I simply, you know what? I have never seen. Maybe I didn't pay attention, but I've never seen even one paper that wasn't already published in some uh, uh, magazines that is recognized by medical community. So, uh, and I'll she's pay, probably I, talking I, about the ar archive uh, articles that are not really in medical journals but are publicly published. Um, we're talking about that and stuff like um, that that's hit the bioarchive and things like that where it's intended to be published but um, is still undergoing peer review um, because peer review is I mean it's a pretty crucial thing in determining um, you know how <sighs> solid the methods are um and how relevant the data is yeah i think it makes I, sense uh, which oh. i i, I try i think that we are like kind of in a uh, in a, uh, a filtering process we are trying to uh, avoid uh, articles that has no source uh, like do not are not published but even if article is published, that doesn't mean that methodology is very good, unfortunately. That's per yeah. uh, MD input again. So within the articles, breaking into clinical studies and animal studies, we will still need to have some uh, evaluation on uh, how good the methodology is. It is still a necessary step, even in a published uh, paper. I would agree with Maya. Uh, it's not my idea. That's what the MD guy. <laughs> well, no, I, I think I think uh, <laughs> the, if you're going to draw conclusions uh, that you think other people are going to act upon, you should probably use published peer-reviewed papers. I mean, those are kind of like the gold standard papers that are trustworthy. Yeah, I think the the uh, what a lot of the um, the Kaggle data is though is because this thing is moving so fast, um, and even though peer review has kind of been ramped up, um, there's still a lot of stuff out there that is pending um, peer review, and there's not necessarily anything wrong with that um as a source but as, as long as we're you know uh identifying that that factor okay for an example 
um, I saw a paper on uh, Italy and their uh, initial response to uh, the epidemic in Lombardy. Now, that that's kind of one of the first papers that have come out of that part of the world and that sort of um, structure, but it's it hasn't actually been published yet. It's in the process of being published. So how important is that? So Maya, can I ask you? Uh, you've probably looked. You've probably looked at the at the articles that are in the data set more than anyone else. So, what's your impression of the data set that you're working on? My impression is that actually, when papers are relevant, have citation, have high density of uh, keywords of frequency, if you wish, and uh, uh, they really uh, answer to some other conditions. I don't remember even <laughs> one publication on there that is not published in a trustworthy source, but it might be because I just don't remember it. We'll check it. Uh, just we could, we could also you can also add as a feature um, to determine not just so we determine the relevance by uh, the the keywords and, and and the rest of it, but you can also determine the um, you know you can you can output the uh, number of citations. So you can use that as a metric against which to judge all yeah. these papers. So Absolutely, maybe. sure. Yeah, well, that's, a good, that's a good point. Actually, as you're talking about that, there's this guy, Jason something, and his primary professional experience is creating graphs of citations, and he's actually created a data set already, the Corona Y data set that uh, somehow clusters something about citations. So we can actually use that as, as one of the inputs. Because oh, given that would be great. Uh, as Cassie says, given, given the speed at which this is all developing, the, the papers that haven't been peer reviewed and haven't been published, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that their content is not going to eventually be peer reviewed and published and incredibly yeah. important. But what we need to ensure is that we communicate that to the person that is interrogating and looking at our outputs so that they can make their better judgment on exactly. whether it's important or not. So, so Maya, again, you're the person that's probably looked at the data set the most. Uh, do, you have, do you have information about how that data set was constructed? Uh, no. But so, what's the source of those journal articles? Who, yes. who decided so, what went into that data set? I have a quick uh, explanation of that. There is a committee, the White House, uh, Allen Institute for AI, and a couple other organizations that uh, organized this initiative and assembled this pipeline of getting as much into this data set as possible. Uh, we're still figuring out a way to more efficiently work with uh, Allen Institute for AI to understand what that process looks like. So to answer your question, we have a general idea and they tried to explain it on the Kaggle challenge and there is a specific PDF document that talks about it, but not in details, unfortunately. I think there's a there's a query that they, they link to that shows like what search parameters they use to get all the articles. Um, the, 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 yeah, I think it's, it's just like a I can mean, say I find it, but they do find it out. Uh, if you can so, find that and share yeah. in the channel, that yeah. would be great. To add so to Cassie, general, I, I, I wonder I, I wonder if Cassie, have you seen that uh, document that that uh, uh, Arthur is referring to? No, I have not as yet, um, but I would really like to take a look at it because the other thing that I'm doing um, for GEO is reading the articles um, and trying to shape um, our output with what they're finding. Um, so trying to measure the importance of certain factors and increasing our data density for those factors. So my thinking is that if you were able to see that uh, document, you might find that the criterion for including an article in our data set is not that different 
than the criterion that was used to create the data set that you're working on. And if that's the case, then, you know, the two data sets would be comparable. Makes sense. Yeah, I mean, we don't really know if there are unpublished articles that are in our data set. Yeah, sounds um, like a fundamental kind of foundational layer to figure out maybe and actually start pulling together the data sets team because there are many people that are working on that and maybe just organizing that effort to create the FAQ, just frequently ask questions about the data set that we have to also propagate this to other teams that are definitely wondering about the same thing. Can, can I ask you something, uh, Arthur, just a quick question. Uh, you mentioned the, the graph, uh, that someone created a graph on the cross citations between papers. Yep, so uh, if you go to the um, Corona Y Kaggle data set, you can yeah. find, and let me send you the link. Uh, I sent that link in, in discussion. There is a data set of citations that uh, citation based met metadata from Microsoft Academic Graph. I think that's the one. Okay. Because this will, this will uh, significantly help with uh, topic modeling as well, not only to judge uh, the paper uh, worthness, but also if the topic has been identified correctly. Yep, sounds good. All right, guys, we're 15 minutes uh, okay. over our uh, designated time. It was amazing. So much stuff is happening. Let's try to push through and any follow-up uh, actions that um, you know we've captured. I know we haven't designated the note taker for this call, but we probably should tomorrow. And I'll upload the video shortly. Thank you so much, Arthur. Awesome. All right. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.